Okay, so in a previous video, I showed you how to set up the NVH toolkit and uh, work through some problems that we have with Windows 11. Today, I actually have it set up where we can go on a test drive and I can show you how to actually use the software to diagnose vibration or sound issues. So uh, a couple things real quick. I already have everything set up and ready to go, but I wanted you to see that there are a couple things that you can play around with that might be important later on. So uh, normally when you go to the record and analyze section of this, you only have the ability to record uh, 50 seconds at a time, which is usually plenty of time, but uh, sometimes you might need a little bit more. So in order to make that possible, you go up here to options and then click on advanced options and under features, you wanna enable advanced features and that is not a, that is not a normal feature that's enabled, you'll have to go do that. Once you do that and you go back to the setup screen, this little box will become available and you can mess with the amount of time. The max amount is 240 seconds. Now I will warn you, if you go really high on your uh, record time, then your file size is gonna be huge. So I think that's why they limit it to 50 seconds in the first place. Um, so I would try to try to fit your test within that 50 second uh, realm. And that's what we're gonna do real quick. So we're gonna drop that down to 50 seconds. All right, now we're ready to record and analyze. So uh, to do this is pretty simple. We're just gonna click restart recording right down here. And uh, since we have the pass-through device plugged in, it's gonna be pulling RPM and vehicle speed for us. So we'll be able to determine exactly when the vibration is, is happening. Now on the vehicle that I picked for this today, it's a 2004 Ford Expedition. It has a really extreme vibration that happens when you're around like 75, 80 miles an hour and it shakes the whole car. So we are going to see if the program can figure out whether or not that's tire related or drive line or, or you know, something else. So I'll go ahead and um, show you what it looks like after I get my recording and then I'll show you how to make sense of it all. Okay, so I finished the drive and this is the capture that we got. So uh, I started recording right around 50 or 60 miles an hour, and then you can see that I got up to around 90. If you look at this red line, that is the miles per hour. And then the blue right down in there, that's your, that's the RPM. And I did end up recording longer than 50 seconds, but as you can see, I can't go back. So I only have what is visible on this screen right here. Okay, now what you can do is you can spread this box out um, and and look at more data so that you are zoomed in on what's really going on up here. Um, you can also just drag the box so I can just pull this around and you can see that it's changing the, gr uh, the graph on the top. And so I'm going to go to this zone right here because this seems like the vibration was pretty bad in this spot. And so you can see things are even off our, our screen right there. So before we analyze this, we need to know a few specifications. So um, inside the cab, you should not be feeling more than about 10 millijes uh, for vibration. And then if you're doing a sound analysis, you shouldn't have more than 70 decibels inside the cab. Um, and that's and that's at the at the driver's ear. So anyways, we're doing this vibration with the accelerometer. And we're off the screen. You can actually grab this and pull it down so we can see how high that went. And so at one point we were hitting 179 millijes. So that was a really big vibration. Now, because of the data that we put in, we put in uh, engine size, we put in gear ratios, we put in tire size, we put in uh, quite a few things. And you can even get more detailed. I'll show you that in a second. But based on what we what data we put in, it calculates the frequencies of all those rotating parts and compares it to the frequency of the vibration. So that's what all these little things are down here. So this T1 is a first order tire vibration, second order tire vibration, third order, and then E is for engine, and we even have half order, first order, second order, and then P is for prop shaft or drive shaft, and you got P1, P2, now, as far as what the orders mean, 
If it's a first order vibration, that means that the, it's happening once per revolution. If it's a second order, it's twice per revolution and then and so on. So this vibration that we're seeing right here doesn't actually line up with anything. It's between this third order tire vibration and this prop shaft vibration. And uh, um, we could we could pull this back and click play down here and actually watch it live again. And you can see it stays closer to the T3. And then as it kind of picks up, it kind of moves closer to the P1 there. And amplitude's changing quite a bit, but it's pretty big. So unfortunately, based on the information that we put in there, it's not really lining up with any of the orders. Now, obviously, it's not showing like half order for prop shaft vibrations and, you know, all those things. So we could... We could get really nitpicky and start adding in um, different vibrations. So I could come over here and add in different ones. I can even do some custom things in there. Um, but I've worked on these 2004 expeditions before. And these transfer cases, um, based on you know three or four problems that I've encountered on these... These transfer cases, when you're in two-wheel drive, which I was during this test drive, what happens is the the magnetic clutch that is in the transfer case um, that we use for all-wheel drive or, or uh, automatic four-wheel drive, I should say, what happens is when you're in two-wheel drive, there's a little bit of, there's just enough drag on those clutches that the faster you go, the front drive line will actually start to kind of uh, rotate along and I've had tons of front drive lines cause vibrations on these on these uh, 04 Expedition 03 even in some of the Explorers um, so I, I look at that and I think man it's really close to a prop shaft vibration and I'm wondering if it's not the exact speed as as the drive shaft it's a little bit slower because it's it's just a drag it's dragging along not at full speed so I think that's what I'm going to chase after on this one. And uh, and I, I bet you that's what it is. But like I said, if we, if we got a little bit more details and things, I bet we could find out this is technically like a, I don't know, like a half order prop shaft or even like a three quarter prop shaft vibration or something. But I think this is enough information for me to, to start chasing after that. A um, couple more things I wanted to show you on here real quick before we finish is you can uh, see some different views with this. So like I can look at three-dimensional frequencies. Uh, you can do road speed comparisons and stuff. RPMs. Bar graphs I really like. Uh, I like the diagram too. This one's really cool. And then you can do a time domain. But for the most part, I think I stay mostly in the bar graph and in the frequency charts. And um, and then, like I said, you can go back like if, back to our setup, or sorry, not our setup, our vehicle information, and we could go into advanced, and we could give it all sorts of information. You know, if you thought the vibration or the noise that you were dealing with was coming from under under the hood, and maybe you thought it was a pulley or something, you could measure the diameter of all the pulleys, and you could input those here, and uh, since since you're pulling in uh, RPM and things like that, it could calculate uh, the noise based on those pulley diameters and tell you what's causing that. I've done some some pretty cool tests with those ones. Maybe I'll do another one um, soon. But I really like this PicoScope uh, MVH toolkit. I think it's very useful. It's very fast. Like it doesn't take very long to do uh, to capture a waveform and and figure out exactly where your vibrations are coming from. I know obviously there's other tools that can help you out with this, but I like how efficient this is and how sure you can be to tell your customer what what needs to be done. I wish this one would have turned out a little bit better as far as lining up with something, but like I said, I've, I've worked on a few of these, so I think we know what this is. Uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Um, if you want me to make another video with some differing things, tell me. But uh, I think that's it for this one. Thank you.